Hello and good morning to everyone out there. Welcome to the Legal Zone where we tackle injustice. Today we have a powerful, amazing show today for you. An amazing story, a sad story, but it's amazing nonetheless. And we trust that the end result would be a day of celebration and rejoicing. We have with us Dr. Arlena Cheney. Hello, Dr. Cheney. Hello. She is gonna represent the people out there who may have questions that are not legal based. We have John Salati. Hello, Mr. Salati. Good morning, Salon, how are you? I'm doing great. And our special guest for today, his name is Anthony Dennison. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, Mr. Salon. How are you? I am great. So before we get into it, let's just talk about a little legal concept before we jump into his story. We talked about defamation. We talked about invading people's privacy. Today, we're going to do a little some talk about a little something different. We're going to talk about qualified immunity because the case that we're talking about today would touch and concern this. Qualified immunity, what in the world is that? Qualified immunity says that all government officials performing discretionary functions are immune from lawsuits. If a state actor, a state employee, police officer, a teacher, social worker, they're working for the state, it's very difficult to sue them when they do wrong. Qualified immunity protects state officials who make reasonable but mistaken judgments about legal questions. A plaintiff must show that the official violated clearly established statutory or constitutional rights. That's not an easy thing to do. I like the way this person says it, Justin Wilson, Qualified immunity means that government officials can get away with violating your rights as long as they violate them in a way nobody thought before. Hmm. Okay. So again, as keep right. that in mind as, oh, wait a minute, let me stop. Okay, keep that in mind as we move forward with today's discussion. Now, let me just give you background about Anthony Dennison. I met An An Anthony, he called me and he started telling me about his case and it was just blowing my mind. And the first question I asked was, what state are you in? And he said that he was in Texas. Now we have offices in several different states, but Texas is not one of them. So I'm not sure how he was able to get our number, but I listened. And it just seemed so overwhelming, borderline, unbelievable what was going on with him. And I teetered on back and forth. Is this something that we can take on? How do we even get involved? And I listened to him talk and he said something very interesting. He said, I just wanna get my kids and go back to Alabama. And I said, oh, um, what part of Alabama? He said, Huntsville. Yeah. And I said, hmm. I grew up in Huntsville. Have you ever heard of a school called Johnson High School? And he said, Mr. Phillips, I'm a Jaguar. So with that, I knew that this was something <laughs> that I had to take on and help this young man. <laughs> so Mr. Anthony Dennison, can you start telling us what you are going through? Yes, sir. Um, basically, we have ran into a situation where we had a family issue. Um, nobody's home is perfect. Nobody knows how no one's doing unless we're checking on each other every day. So 
at the beginning of me and my wife meeting, we both understood that there were gonna be several challenges. There were several things we needed to take care of before we can actually go before God. So we had, had to start working on things that proved in his eyes. So we went to the family. We said, well, hey, my wife is uh, separated. I'm single. Hey, we feel like we're gonna be okay. We, we got this, it's all good. So the family was okay at first. And they said, well, hey, let's see what we can do. So we did it. And when I met my wife, she had a son. And when I met him, I'm gonna be honest. No, no man wants to look at another man that's not his father. Oh, we were bumping heads for the longest. And it started to come to a point to where I started showing him things that I would show my own kids, okay? So my thing about it is, if I tell somebody's kid, I don't care if it's not my kid. If I see a kid going across the street and some cars are coming, I'm gonna say, hey man, watch out for that car. It don't matter if I know you or not because I don't wanna see you hurt. So it was never about me being his daddy or none of that. But grandma and grandfather felt like, well, hey, you're not his daddy. You don't discipline him. You don't tell him, like, you don't do this. I said, well, yes, ma'am, I, I will stand down. And let's let his dad come around because not one time did I deny his father to even come around. Yeah, man, I'm here now. Y'all separated, y'all divorcing, that's fine. I'm single, I've never married. Hey, we're getting ready to do this. So that was our understanding in the household. Now, in the midst of all this, my son started going to school, acting out. So I, I go up to the school. I go meet, I'm, I'm some police officers. They're drawing guns on me at the door. They're saying, hey, you're not his daddy. Why are you here to get him? He doesn't want to go home with you. I said, well, hey, I'm not his daddy but I am his stepfather and I do love him like he's mine. And at the end of the day, before y'all hurt him, yes, I will get him and take him in and cover him the best way I can. Okay, let's go. So let's, let's, well, let's, hey, man. Let, let's get to the part where you have five now. Let's get to the point where yes. it happens. Okay, so when this all occurred, They made a CPS work and another child was born. I had my first little girl. Her name was Charisma Dennison. So it was, it was a, it was basically a, a two-sided thing. You know, I have charisma and Curtis is not mine. So a CPS involved and said, Well, hey, we heard that you've been spanking Curtis and uh you going to jail for that. I said, Well, yes, sir, I did spank him. I caught him being hard-headed and I didn't want him to run out in that street. If I was wrong for that, yes, the judge needs to tell me I'm wrong for that. And I will find an alternative solution. So we went to court and the judge said, Mr. Dennison, I am going to dismiss this case. You were not wrong. It's not against the law. But yes, let's find another alternative solution. I said, yes, ma'am. So once we did that, we went through another CPS trial. They acted like they were going to take the rights from the mother and uh, keep me from being around the mother, like I was the threat. So I started breaking things down from them. I did actually get to them and say, well, hey, let's stop doing this. Let's do it like that. That was working. When Charisma came into the picture, more referrals came in. We were living at a motel. It was time to leave. We were trying to go to housing. There were several resources to move out of grandmother's house because evidently being at grandmother's house was a problem. But grandmother never stated this to us because grandma was happy every day. So we didn't know grandma felt like this. So they came and snatched our babies behind little Curtis. So when all these kids went into custody, so the how police many, came how and how illegally many, removed them. How many kids went into custody? Four kids went into custody at that time. Okay. And they so we went to court and they dismissed the case because they took they took four in at that time illegally and then they dismissed the case. So the case came dismissed 
with prejudice, mm -hmm. which means, Mr. Dennison, if we're worried about whether you, how you're living or or something that's basically going to fall up under a poverty case, no, sir, we were wrong. We are going to forget. We won't talk to you about this again. However, if we find that you have neglected or abused or hurt one of these kids, Mr. Dennis, we're coming to see you. And that was plain and clear to me. So okay. I asked the judge, I said, well, yes, Your Honor, okay. I will do that. Will so you sign quick. this order with prejudice? All right, really quick. When you came to me, they had taken five of the kids, right? Correct. Okay, so let's start the story from right there. So this, this became... Okay, it fell into a brand new case because that old case got closed out with prejudice. So we don't even understand how there's even a new case with the same situation. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. okay. So basically, we even when this situation occurred, it they, they planned some kind of attack on us because all of a sudden, I had all these criminal charges. I'm breaking the law and the sheriff's just running around with a warrant for me. After they took your, your five kids. But keep in mind, I'm in pretrial, but they got false misdemeanor cases on me. I'm taking drug tests. I'm communicating with everybody. I'm talking to mental health counselors. Hey, am I tripping? They say, hey, you okay? Keep going. We don't got nothing positive on you. It ain't nothing. So when this case comes up, we go to court. I say, hey, Your Honor, we are not supposed to be here. We are not the reason the kids came into custody. She said, well, Mr. Dennison, you're right. I don't see you or mom doing anything to the kids. Let's return the key parents. That was our understanding. Your connection keeps going in and out. We'll go check out whatever we need to do. So while we were trying to make the arrangements of going back to either grandmother's house or to a motel or to a shelter, which was totally all our choice, they decided to not even come meet with us and go run to the judge and get paperwork signed and say, hey, we have a new case. I see new imminent danger. These kids are not safe. So they went and got the judge to sign the paperwork on it. When we identified that they went and got the paperwork signed on it, we immediately started hitting judicial complaints. Okay, hey, so that, fraud, fraud, so they, fraud, fraud. All right, so one, one, one second, because we want to make sure that we're understanding the sequence of things. So at one point you had five children with okay. your current wife, that's Rita. Yes. Okay. And the first one was not yours, but the other four, they're yours. Correct. Okay. And then there came a time when CPS, we're trying to understand how did CPS come and get those five? Where were you, where were you and Rita? Okay, when the CPS came and got those five, it was to my understanding that evidently I had a warrant out for my arrest and they took me to the Harris County Sheriff's Department and to serve my warrant. While I was serving the warrant, I went to probable cause four times on a falsified charge. When I came out of probable cause the fourth time, I was looking at my wife in intake. She was and there. They told the, me, I she said, well, baby, she was in there receiving charges, a felony charge for child endangerment and assault all of a sudden. I said, well, hold on. If you here and I'm here, who got the kids? She said, baby, they are at home with mama and my sister. I said, well, okay, cool. So I kept noticing they kept prolonging and sending me through probable cause because I should have got out first, right? So I went through probable cause. I said, hey, let me call grandma and say, grandma, we're on our way. We're sorry, whatever's going on, let's get because the kids need to be safe and secure. When I called home, sir, they told me my kids were found walking down the street almost a mile away from the home. And there was no way on earth I believed that because how our locks are in the house, the kids couldn't have got to it because you have to have a key to even get out of the front door. 
Okay. So, so there are safety precautions all around the house. Okay. So while you and Rita were down at the, was it the courthouse? The was county it the, jail. The county, county, jail. county jail. CPS yes, came to Rita's mother's house and took all five kids, or they said they were walking down the street just randomly. And so they picked them up. Yes. Yes. And, and the police had just left them with the grandma and sister. So they were responsible for them at that time. And what date was this? When did because this happen? Because we were taken into custody. And what date was this? This was on the uh, August of 2019. August 11, 2019, on or about. Did you, have you seen the kids since then? Um, I was able to see them maybe three times. And that's when they put, and when I um, basically got the court order that says they were supposed to release the kids, that's when they put the abatement on us and said that we came to the visitation not knowing how to, conduct the business and we're making threats and I'm being all aggressive. But there was no way to say that, Mr. Phillips, because we have already been through CPS and we're fully aware of how the business works. So no one was in there being disrespectful, ugly or nothing. Okay, so- We can tell they lied. You see okay, what I'm so, saying? Right, so they took the five kids because they said they were walking down the street and then you had a court date on that. Mm -hmm. you had a, and the court actually gave them back to you, right? Yes. But, yes. then, but then what happened? How did they CPS get them again after the court awarded them to go back to you? So the case, so the caseworker's job is, at that time, the caseworker's job is to get with them and return the kids. It's that simple. But where the problem came at, we, we told the judge, we said, hey, judge, if you, do, if you heard about the kids going back to the house with us, because there, there's nobody hurt when they're with us, and as long as we're at the house, it's okay. We'll go to a shelter. So I had a shelter that was good to me when I first moved to Houston. When I first came to Houston, I didn't have no family. I didn't have nothing. My mother had just passed. I, I, was, I was on my own. So it was just me. I wasn't in a shelter. But within the shelter, in 30 days, I had got a job, an apartment, and bought me a car. So I was well on my way. I had proven that program to be good. So I always thought that in the event of an emergency, this shelter is gonna always be here. So that's why I offered it to the courts. Not that we had to go there, but hey, just until we can figure out what we can do, let me contact some family because this is a real emergency. We'll go to the shelter or we can go to the out, go with the outreach team. We can go with the police officers, sir, when these kind of situations, nobody wanted to come meet us. They ran straight back to the judge and signed the paperwork and said, hey, we got a new case and confessed on the transcript and that they case. never attempted to even bring our kids back, which was totally illegal and against the order. So, so the way they got the five kids back. So CPS took the five kids because they said they were walking down the street. You had a hearing the judge awarded the kids back to you. And then when CPS went to deliver the kids, they said that you weren't available. You were nowhere to be found. Is that right? They never came to deliver them. And but they admitted they it on the transcript they, that they never came. But they said they did, which is why they're still with them. They now. said, yes, they said they did. We okay. didn't know that though. And so they, they've been with CPS again for how long? Almost two years now. So it's well over 18 months at this point. Wow. And are they giving you any visitation? Did you hear me? Are they giving you any no, visitation? Sir, you cut are, they, out. are they giving you any visitation? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. They have denied our we haven't seen our kids since February of 2020. What's the age? What's the ages of all five? At the time that they took them, they were between two and six. Right now, those ages have changed. Yeah. So right now they're they're three, five, six, eight. 
they're 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 too older than what we left for no reason. Now, um, tell us about Q. What's his name? Attorney. There was an attorney who started helping you. No, he was actually a community activist. His name is Cornell A. Okay. Is he an attorney? So, <clears throat> no, he's he's not an attorney. He's actually he's a community activist. He's supposed to represent families in wrongdoings and civil rights violations. And he only gets involved if he sees an actual violation or if he can pinpoint something that he can say, hey, yeah, they are doing that. Okay. I thought he was. So, gonna... Mr. We reached out to Mr. No, sir, I apologize. He's not an attorney. Okay. But uh, we reached out to Mr. X and said, well, hey, Mr. X, man, they just falsified my drug test. Well, first of all, they court ordered me to take a drug test. And they said they were going to take my kids if I didn't take the drug test. I said, well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet the court standards. I'm going to show y'all that I don't do no drugs. So I went and did it. But what I went and did it, and they did it at their facility. Their facility here in Houston is called National Drug Screening. So I went in there and I said, well, hey, man, I need to do a hair follicle for CPS and this, that, and the other. And hey, let's get this taken care of. He said, well, come on in. They shaved my whole leg, my whole leg. So I was kind of feeling sexy for a minute. I said, well, yeah, I hope they got what they need. So as I wait on the results for two days later, they say, yeah, Mr. Dennison, you got meth and amphetamine in your system. I said, whoa, so you're telling me I've been high all the time? They said, yeah, you wasn't a lot of high. It was just a little bit. I said, a little bit? First of all, if I'm going to party, I'm going to party a lot. So I said, hey, we know all of that ain't true. I said, but hey, ain't nobody going to believe Anthony. Anthony is the lie right now. So I said, well, hey, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go take three more hair follicles that says you're lying right now. So Anthony showed up. He'd been quiet and he walked out that door and he went to three more labs and he went and got those tests and all of them said negative. Then we called Mr. X. We said, hey, Mr. X, can you believe this? He, he said, what? He said, yeah, no. He said, I'll tell you what, when you go to my lab, I said, yes, sir. I will go to your lab and I will pay. He said, all right. He called his plug. He said, hey, I'm sending somebody over there. We want to know if this man is on drugs or not. He said, you don't even smoke a little weed, man? I said, man, I don't even smoke weed, man. He said, all right. He said, I don't believe it, but all right, I'm going to go see. I'm going to go play with you. Give me 2500 I said, here you go. Pay it. Now, he sent me to his lab. She shaved my other leg. So now I got two sexy legs. So I'm feeling like a beach body right now. Now I said, Miss Yanny, will you please call us with the results as soon as possible? Yes, Dennis. Miss Yanny called me and said, hey, you are clean. She said, but let me tell you how clean you are. I said, please, Tim. She said, hey, the other test you gave me, that went back three months. My test you just took from me went back six. There's no way to lie on it. I said, whoa. So I called Mr. X. I said, hey, Mr. X, what we gonna do? He said, ah, I got a murder trial. I'll call you back. We ain't heard from him since. Now, I, I did have an opportunity to speak to- and he just left our kids in the system. Supposed to be the one to go get these kids and charge up the caseworkers when they act as such. So somebody was paid, a technician was paid to falsify my drug test. That's a major problem because they're doing that to everybody if they're sitting there pulling it on me. Like I wasn't going to catch it. Okay, so I did speak to Mr. X and he did confirm that CPS has falsified information. Also, yes. also, well, before I go into what we do know, Dr. Cheney, do you have any questions? We know there's a lot. The question that I have is why? Is it, do they have a quota? That they have to meet. Hey, I can explain. I can explain why they made it positive. Stop, stop, stop. The, let me tell you why they made it positive for meth. In the guidelines of CPS to prove 
through some imminent danger or physical harm. You got to hurry up and jump in this. You got to have drugs, weapons, or imminent danger. They didn't have none of them, Miss Cheney. So they had to get some of that, didn't they? And that's how we were able to book. So, Mr. Dennison, but I'm going back to why. Why, you, it, based on what you're saying, it's not only you, there's a possibility there are other people that this has been done to. So why would they do that? Is it because they have to have so many uh, people that have done these damages to justify their existence, their jobs? It's, it's so strange. It's so strange, Ms. Cheney, because a news story went out yesterday morning that 90% of the children in CPS right now in Texas is citizen. And they're black children. They're after black children. And it's been stated on the news yesterday morning. They're after black children. So what are they doing with so them? So CPS has a whole bunch of black foster children that just need all of these parents and their parents are sitting right here. So let's let's read let's recap. Really. Let's recap. So Anthony and Rita has five children. They've been getting these charges. They've been getting accused of different things. Now you will, you've never been convicted on any charge, have you, Anthony? No, no, he's sir. Never, he's never no, been sir. convicted. Everything's been dismissed. Okay, he's been convicted numbers of times going to the court one day, him and Rita, both at the same time, were charged while they're at the courthouse or the jail rather, CPS goes to the grandmother's house or says that they're walking down the street, picks them up. They have a hearing, the mm -hmm. court gives the children, all five back to Rita and, and um, I see that John just found the article all five children are ordered back to Rita and Anthony. When they go back to, to them, they say that there's no one home. And so what other choice do they have but to keep them? And that's where they've been ever since. Now- Correct. Right, so, this, so let me just finish. This was a story that Anthony came to me. And so I did some digging. What we always do, we don't just take people's word for it. We actually have to do some sort of background investigation. And this story seems bizarre. Like Dr. Cheney was saying, why would somebody want to do that? So I started calling some of the social workers huh. and the stories that they were giving me were like, well, so I just asked one question. I said, are these kids adopted? They shut down. Yes, yeah, so we can't talk to you. You're not an attorney on this case. So hmm. for those who may not know, I'm licensed in different states, but not Texas. So in order for me to enter my appearance in this case, I would need to be, it's called pro hoc. Somebody, an attorney in Texas bring me in. So I called mm -hmm. Mr. Dennison's attorney and I'm gonna say her name, Danielle Sims. And I started talking to her. And she was telling me about the case and her fighting for Mr. Dennison. And I said, well, why has Mr. Dennison been found to be an unfit parent? She said, no. So I said, well, why aren't his kids with them? She said, well, it's more complicated than that. It's this, it's that and the other. And she said, Mr. Dennison really doesn't talk to me with any respect. And I said, okay, how about I talk to Mr. Dennison because I think that cultures are different and I come back and I talk to you and whatever you want to tell me, I tell Mr. Dennison, I'll be the go in between. And first she said, yes. And so I went to Mr. Dennison and I said, man, you gotta apologize to this lady. You know, she feels like you're attacking her. He did it. We mm -hmm. worked on an email together. He drafted to apologize. Then I contacted her, totally different story. I don't wanna talk to you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what what I do? No. You're not on this case. I'm not going to deal with you. And I said, but we just had mm -hmm. this conversation. Yes. No, just shutting me off. So mm -hmm. she tells me she's going to withdraw from um, Anthony's case. And I said, but he doesn't want you to withdraw. What grounds would you use? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So now we have a situation where Anthony's attorney, who's supposed to be representing him and the caring is coming up this week, right? 
next week. Yes, sir. Monday. She clearly doesn't want to be in this. And she's filed mm -hmm. a motion with the court to withdraw from representing him. So I work with Mr. Dennison and we file a motion against her motion. <laughs> like you can't make this stuff up. So <laughs> this, you can't. This, this is what we file with the court. I'm gonna show the audience what was actually filed on Mr. Dennison's behalf. So this is the motion to strike counsel's motion to withdraw. Anthony Dennison, not by and through his attorney, ironically files this motion for himself and on behalf of himself, though he is represented by counsel. <laughs> and so we go on and we talk about the reasons why she can't jump out of it. And apparently the judge agreed with us and made mm -hmm. her stay on, but she still doesn't want to be there. Hmm. Right? Right. Um, so I send her this email after going back and forth with her. Now you all have to watch this. This is an email that I sent to his attorney. Danielle, my ultimate goal is not getting pro hack status. That's me getting in. My ultimate goal is to help Mr. Dennison get his children back. And this just so happens to be your goal as well. We are on the same page and on the same team. Why are we going back and forth as though we are not? It makes absolutely no sense. If you are his attorney, why resist me? I'm trying to help him too. I just don't get it, to be honest. Of course, she never responded to me, but I asked for the copies of the discovery. And she says, Mr. Phillips, you can have the file in its entirety once you make a formal appearance in this case as counsel for Mr. Dennison. Until then, Mr. Dennison can share his file with you as he sees fit. I will not have a level. Hmm. So we have these questions that's going on where they have two beautiful children. Do you all have pictures of the kids? Um, yes, we do. Yeah, if you could bring some we of those We did get up. one off the exhibit list. Okay, if, Let you me see. Bring, if you could bring some of those up. We have this situation where, and John, you can mention these, I'm gonna turn it over to you in a minute, where it's weird. He has an attorney, the attorney won't pro hoc me in so I can help. The attorney won't allow me to be the go in between, but yet she has to represent him and everywhere along the way, she's asking to be released from the case. Something's wrong. I mean, there's clearly something's wrong here. You know, there's a piece of information we don't have. That somebody, I mean, again, you start to get all conspiracy theory, but it's like somebody seems to be leaning on her mm -hmm. to stay out of all this because none of it makes any sense. Hmm. Oh. Um, I mean, she's setting herself up for a bar complaint. I mean, of serious stuff because, right? She's been ordered to stay in, but she's not doing anything. She's not cooperating in any way. She is not zealously representing her client. She's not immodestly representing her client. She's doing nothing. I mean, this, this is, you know, and I did get some information on Thursday of last week where I spoke to a social, social worker because you all have a newborn now. And Correct. the new social worker was telling me that whenever there's an active case on certain kids and a couple, the same couple who is actively being investigated has another kid, that new kid now they have to go by and investigate. So she seemed very helpful and I asked her, I said, have these other five kids been adopted out already? And that's why no one wants to act like they want to give them back. And she said, no, I'm looking at the system right now. They're all in foster care. So I think that's a good thing um, because there has been a recent case in South Carolina where a father had to fight to get his child back from adoption. They had adopted the child out. Mm. So, mm -hmm. 
It's a very weird case. Dr. Cheney, you, I can see you thinking something. Yeah, that's right. I am wondering, um, I believe in activism. I believe in fighting for rights, of course. Uh, Mr. Dennison, you mentioned about other families, other children that are in the same situation or similar situation, in, right? Correct. Now, how do you know that? And has anyone suggested finding some kind of way to work together with these uh, group of people? Well, we try to, and like completed our service plan. They gave me a service plan. How you get a service plan when you wasn't the reason that fault? We're still at question at it, but we completed the service plan. And we said, well, hey, we at least got the service plan completed. The drugs are clean. The homes are clean. The parents are clean. Can we have our kids back? And she tells us, oh, well, the case was over back in October 2nd when she released the kids back to you. I said, well, ma'am, if the case was over back in October, why am I sitting here fighting with a falsified drug test and a service plan that y'all say I need to complete? And I never got a straight answer after that. So that let me know that we were no longer doing family law. We had been attacked under a criminal, um, a suspected trafficking and smuggling situation because it all fell up under it. If CPS does not have a reason to have us custody, you shouldn't have their kids. It's that simple. I do not go to court for your speeding ticket, do I, Miss Cheney? If you get in your car and go out speeding today, does Mr. Dennison have to go pay for your ticket? No, ma'am. Sounds like Miss Cheney has to go to court and take care of her own ticket. So I'm still trying to figure out how we're even having a trial about something that never happened from Mr. Dennison or Miss Joshua. Yeah. So then I started looking at. So then I started looking at why would them attack us like this, put their careers up on it and say, hey, we riding on it. Then I understood that we were in a previous lawsuit in the federal building. Now that federal building shoots everything to Louisiana, Fifth Circuit. Fifth Circuit just got hit with being in contempt. So somebody's over there destroying documents Somebody's over there falsifying documents. Somebody's deleting stuff. I have a crazy saying. The monkeys had grabbed the clock and that's what happened. And they were able to move. Wait, wait, because say they were abusing you, you, their power. You blacked out. Say it again. It, you had a connection. Say, say you're saying again. The monkeys had grabbed the controls. Mm. So everything was working. Everything was working how they wanted it to work. Nothing was working right because the whole city was down. Actually, the whole world was down. So at that time, everybody had money. Everybody had this. Everybody had access to that. Me and my wife was working. We had we went on our pandemic, everything. Hey, it wasn't no reason them kids shouldn't have came back to us. Do you have the pictures of the kids yet? But they still Do set them. Do you have the pictures of the kids? Um, I'm having a problem getting them up. I have to get them back to you. All right. And we did invite uh, Mr. Yeah, at a later date. I have to be honest. I don't have a computer. And I'm not too experienced with the Zoom. So I apologize. Oh, it's okay. So we did invite Mr. X. He said that he was going to try to come on the show. But I guess he might be having some issues as well. Well, Mr. Dennison. Correct. We are here. I know you have a trial coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Correct. Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. And you've asked your attorney to call me as a witness and Mr. X as a witness. Now we don't Correct. know. That. We don't know if that's going to happen. But if the okay. work, if if the judge does not rule in your favor, then we'll find an attorney who could pro hoc me in, and we will continue the fight for you. We're not going to give up on you until you get your kids back. Yes, sir. All right. I would appreciate that. Definitely. Thank you yes, for sir. Thank you for coming. And, um, also, 
I want to I want to just throw one more thing out. Sure. We were going to court and we were trying to like negotiate, like, hey, this is crazy. You know, we do our kids. The judge sat there on transcript and told us we are doing this divide and conquer tactic, and I don't have to follow the uh, CPS guidelines. My orders are above the law. Plain as day. No judge is above the law. And no judge is that comfortable to sit on my transcript and tell me her orders are above the law because she's only in a state court. So you're telling me you're in that state court and you're going to violate federal laws and nobody's looking at it? Yeah, that's a serious problem. And that's why this is going to happen. And they're going to try to do it to some more families if they can pull it on us because we already had a lawsuit. There was no way for them to do this to us unless they so i would have said i was crazy until i got shot at after i went and showed the court order to the cops there was no reason i got shot at man i live behind two school zones sir now even in the event that they felt like i was the bull crap and i was out there acting crazy they didn't even come check me for gunpowder so that's how we know they had ordered a hit on us from a payroll cop and I know the payroll cop too, and the store, and the guy that sent it, and even the vehicle they sent because we were trying to buy the vehicle for the family. That's how crazy it was. That's how we even recognized the vehicle. So there was even a murder for hire in this situation. So yeah, I would have been okay with going to court until my life got written behind it. Wow. All right, Mr. Dennison, we'll keep in touch and let me know Hopefully I'll be there because it's a Zoom hearing Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. And I'll see you then. Thanks for yes, coming sir. on. Thank you for coming on. All right. All Thank right. you. All right. Bye-bye. Good luck. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Wow. Dr. Cheney, I'm going to start with you. Where is he living now? The two of them together, right? And where is he living? They're in, they're somewhere in Houston. I don't know the address. But, but they I, have a place, that kind of thing. Yes. They're not living there. with the grandmother. They're not living with the grandmother. They have their own place. Okay. That's part of the requirement? Um, I believe you have to have your own place before they could release the kids back to you. Um, but he has his own place regardless. But he's very, he's very hesitant to let them know where he is because he thinks they want to take the newborn that they just had. Oh. I mean, it's a wild story. And that's why I said in the beginning when I was hearing it, I'm like, so when I started doing my digging, I said, hey, there's a lot of truth to this. The other thing I want to ask is what I was getting from him about the other families. How do you know that? Was it a news article? Is it just uh, rumors? John, well, John pulled up some articles. John, what are those articles that you were showing me? Well, they're all articles that talk about um, Texas CPS taking children, but particularly uh, African-American children. Uh, that is talking about the, the federal lawsuit, the oldest article is from 2017, talking about this federal lawsuit, talking about the disproportionality of children being taken from African American parents compared to you know, white parents and that kind of thing. So there's been clearly no lack of media coverage of problems with Texas CPS. I mean, those were three quick little articles just, you know, sitting here while he's talking and saying, well, what, what's out there? Uh, so he's not alone with having problems. Now, whether his situation is particularly unique or not, I don't know. But there are clearly issues with CPS, um, you know, messing with families. And it's not clear. Yeah, it sounds like something from some bad movie that, they just come and they take your kids and then there's nothing you can do to get it back. Well, are there anybody, are there attorneys mentioned in the article 
to su suggest that it might lead to a class action lawsuit for the people that have been impacted, the children's parents. And that would be a good idea, uh, Dr. Cheney, to actually see what attorneys, because I couldn't find, I mean, I didn't do an all out search, but find other local attorneys to help get in on this. Oh, we, because you, yeah. We can get into that later. So what are, are your other thoughts on this, Dr. Cheney, before I turn it over to John? Well, it sounds a little bit like, just a little bit like immigration here in the United States in the southern border, not to get too much into that, in a sense that you just can't leave children to waste by the by themselves. Parents was, have to get involved and the state has to do right. Well, when I was talking to his attorney, asking about that story, and she said that all five, from a two-year-old to a seven-year-old, the way she painted the picture, they were all almost naked and barefoot, just walking down the street holding hands. <laughs> and a cop was called and these kids were just roaming aimlessly. And the grandmother was home at the time? She didn't say. And I asked her and I said, is that the story? And she said, that's the story. And then she said they did go to court. They got him back. And then they went to go deliver the kids back to the address that was in the documents. And they said no one was at that house. That's, what, that's the story she told me. And that's the story that she has to defend. Now, of course, Anthony says we were home the whole time. No one ever came. So when I talked to the attorney, I said, "This, if this, what you're telling me is true, it does not seem like a difficult case to defend. And she couldn't explain to me where the difficulty was coming from. Maybe it was the fact that the way he was speaking to her. And he was, and you could imagine if your kids are gone and you have someone who's taking it, you know, nonchalant. That, but that shouldn't be anything new. I mean, unless she was what, you know, public defender who never does this. I mean, if you do family law stuff, people tend to get a little bit, you know. Right. And she, and she, was, she is, she was appointed. So I don't know if she's a public defender, but she might be along those lines. Well, she might be appointed and not do the, you know, she does a divil, typical business civil litigation or whatever, and you're not used to. You know, business lawsuits, people getting really off the chain a little bit. But, I mean, yeah, you, the man just lost five kids. You expect them to be totally Upset. rational? Yeah. And so there's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot of facts that we don't know. <laughs> we do know that they have five kids. We do know that they're in foster care. We do know that there's been no trial that have, has adjudicated him or his wife as unfit, and that's per the attorney. Um, and he has a trial coming up. So John, where's the injustice in this situation? Maybe the better question would be, where isn't the injustice in this situation? I mean, it's hard to know where to begin. It's, the whole thing is such a legal disaster. I mean, the fact that they haven't seen their children in over a year, how do you justify that? Let's assume they feel they have some kind of case. Uh, maybe I don't know enough about CPS, but I would presume some sort of supervised visitations, whatever. I mean, again, you've told me no court has ruled against either of these parents. No court has ruled against them. And yet they haven't seen their children in 15, 16 months. There's no uh, schedule set up for that. The dicey lawyer thing that that just seems to be. That's why I get back to the conspiracy theory. All these things, it's like this. There's something in the background that those of us sitting here, we don't know because the pieces don't make any sense. So how the CPS is handling this, how the lawyer is acting, you know, that, that she won't work with you, she won't help you, she, and she hasn't given him the file. I mean, she said, oh, right, isn't that the part of the thing? Well, if he wants to show you the file, he can. 
yeah, but you haven't given it to him, right? Didn't that come up with her? Yeah, I, I asked him for it and he said he doesn't know if he has it. I mean, and she's not, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, there's almost nothing to talk about because there were all these, what you know, was called these sort of um, voids, you know, in the scenario that, well, how can this be? But we don't, we don't understand this. We don't understand this. Maybe that's the injustice that so much is hidden here. Yeah. And now there's Tuesday where he's going back to court or Monday, Monday, he's going back to court. Is she really going to represent him? Who knows? Is she going to really call me as a witness? I doubt it. Because the only thing I could testify as for is what I've heard and seen. And that's through my conversations with her. And that's not going to be a good look for her. Right. I mean, unless she was still trying to get out. But even that, because she doesn't want to let you in. I mean, in other words, she could have gotten you in and gotten out of the damn thing. And yet she won't do that. That's part of the thing that strikes me is something... Yeah, when I asked if her... If she to... wanted out so bad, why didn't she say, yeah, okay, great, you're in, bye. I mean, yeah. I don't know what the pro-hack rules are in Texas. Does she still have to remain in the case to oversee you, kind of? Or I, I don't know whether that's how that works there. Yeah, she would, she would sponsor me, so to speak, but I would take over. And, but she said, I don't know you like that, so I'm not going to do it. Well, I, I grant that, but as a reasonable compromise to the fact that you don't want to represent this man. It's not like you showed up in, on her doorstep and said, oh, by the way, there's this guy, Tony Dennison over here. I want to represent him, but I'm from Maryland. Will you let me in? That's not what's happening here. Right. She's supposed to be representing him, but she won't nor will she take the easy out that you're handing her. Say, well, okay, I'll do it. Dr. Cheney, does, when you was listening to him and watching him, did he seem credible to you? Yeah, he believes what he's saying. I would think he does. Did you believe him? I had nothing else other than what his story was. So yes, I believe him, but I don't get enough information. I asked him about um, the other families and maybe he didn't know that much about the articles or whatnot, but that's possible because he's very emotional and I wonder about the children themselves. Does somebody do a report? I'm sure they do to know the status of them. And they are very young and they're used to their mothers and grandmothers and family members and father. Just wonder what state they're in. You know, their mental status. It must be really something. I'm gonna throw this out here, just being devil's advocate and then we'll end. What if CPS is saying, we found families with nice houses, with resources that can give these young children above average education. Hey, we're doing society a favor. What do you think about that? Take these kids away from this family because they don't deserve them. You're on mute, John. That's not the law. I mean, let, let's go with that. Okay, all of that's true. The rest of the stuff is just, yeah, yeah, it's not really what we think it is. That's the real truth. If Even if that's the real truth, you still have to, one, adjudicate these people as being unfit, and that has not happened. And two, you have the situation of, Right now, we're told they're still in foster care. So even if you believe you're doing these children a favor, 
you still can't keep these parents from their children, can you? Is that how foster care works? That the biological parents are totally off? I mean, again, even in that best of all Panglossian world that you're laying out there, I, I, there's no justice there. Yeah. You know. It's, it's, it's CPS playing the role of God saying, this family deserves this child, even though they didn't bring him into this world. And, and the judge hasn't agreed with them, right? At least as far as we know, the judge is consistently, the judges, I guess it's more than one, have sided with Mr. Dennison and his wife. There's that. And then, of course, I'm wondering, does the grandmother have any standing here? Does the grandmother have an ability to say, I, you know, these are my grandchildren. I, I need to be able to see them. Don't I have any rights here? That would be the role of his attorney to bring all these other family members in. But I don't know if she's doing that. And the questions and, continue to swirl. And so th in the past, the judge has found that these kids belong back to their parents. Will they do it again? Will the court do it this week coming up? We'll have a follow-up show and let our listening audience know what happened to this family of seven, actually eight now, because they have a newborn that just was born a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh... I think one of the things that might come out is that uh, Mr. Dennison is being blamed, so to speak, for his attitude. Some people are really vicious when you don't treat them the way that they think you should be treated. And I'm hearing that he has some strong interactions, negative interactions with his attorney. Yeah, I would admit that I've seen some of the emails that he has sent to her, especially after the judge ordered her to stay on. I had but, to tell him, don't, <laughs> you don't talk to people that way. I, I, again, I'm going to agree with that, but she won't let you take over and get out. See, there's like, what's the quirk here? What is it that we're not getting? Let's again, go with that. We won't question that. He's been harsh with her. Okay. Then here's this man coming along saying, okay, I'll take this. Just, you know, give me the, the signal in and, and let, let stand down. And then you don't have to deal with it. And she's refusing. Yeah. So there's just... You know, it's just the pieces don't fit. It's not yet. Right. right. And then if he's had that kind of interactions with the state government workers, uh, they may say, and a lot of them may be burned out too with with the jobs. We, we're on the front line in these jobs. And it's not, I'm not trying to give justification. I'm trying to seek why is this going on and why with the other people because it's just it's just so unfortunate well so so what it comes down to then dr cheney is in a sense what you're implying you haven't said it and maybe you don't mean it but the implication or the inference i'm making there is that this is being done out of spite because again the courts have ruled in their favor again and again and again and yet cps is pulling these children away from the parents not letting them see them, not working out some kind of a plan to da da da. Okay, you dissed me. I'm burned out. Mm -hmm. I'm the quintessential, you know, low level bureaucrat who has a little bit of power and now I'm going to use it against you. I mean, that's what I'm, in a sense, my read of what you're laying out there. That's is what that, I'm suggesting, maybe. Well, again, you're not justifying what's happened. You're saying, well, is this, 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 is this, okay. So, you know, we have the power and we're gonna, we're gonna stick it to you. Ouch. Yeah. And then the justice system or the justice, again, the system is not broken. It's the people. The system is not corrupt. It's the people. Let's see how this turns out. We'll have a follow-up on that. And I forgot to mention the beginning of the show, Subscribe down at the button on the, on the bottom left, right? Any questions or concerns? If anyone's in Texas and they know of any attorneys, email the legal zone at Remus Law. 
Dave, if you could somehow put that on bold letters somewhere, the email address, the legal zone at remuslaw.com. Remus Thank you all, Dr. Cheney, John, always a pleasure. And we'll see you all again next time. Thank okay. you, Salon. More justice. More justice. Thanks for watching our video. For experienced legal services in Washington, D.C., Alabama, and Washington State, visit our website at remuslaw.com or call us at 1-833-329-1799.